Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain 25th anniversary. So in this video, this is going to give my uh, thoughts and feelings about the 25th anniversary, uh, you know, box, you know, from Yu-Gi-Oh! And just, we've had 25 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know? So it's been quite a long time. It's, I've grown up with this game. It's my childhood, really. So let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, and so I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to continue on with this and talk about the good points of the 25th anniversary that Konami has done, and that is the new rarity, um, the 25th century rarity. I like it. It's a great celebration. Um, I I do I do in my personal uh, opinion feel needs there needs to be a bit more, you know, in terms of like whatever, but. It's a good start, and um, there'll be other points I'll make, you know, in this video that I think Konami maybe might have covered it, and maybe this might not be needed. But those are one of the good points that, you know, I think that's really good. The new rarity, it's going to go up in value over time. It's going to appreciate. It's going to be something that I think, even though it is easy to acquire now, I think that anyone who acquires the 25th uh, anniversary cards you know collects them all definitely something that can promote the game you know into the future and just a nice collectible for all those collectors out there so great job and also the fact that this 25th anniversary uh box is printed as unlimited as well meaning that the original uh printing of these sets when they came out all the way back when still retain their value so we like that we like that a lot Okay, let's uh, continue on. Okay, and now we'll get to the bad points. And some of the bad points I'll put here are there's no new support. Like we have these, um, you know, car, uh, you know, we have these, like, you know, 25th anniversary, you know, like legacy, you know, archetypes that have been prominent and relevant, you know, in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, like Dark Magician. And the fact that there's been no support, you know, put into this box, I feel is a waste is a wasted shame, is a waste of their potential here. Um, it would have showed that, you know, they cared a bit about, you know, the 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 cards that have brought us, you know, good memories into into now, people who have grown up with it. Like, am I a fan of uh, Dark Magician? Um, you know, not really. Um, but I think like for people who are a fan of it would have been nice for them or anyone who's a fan of the old school Yu-Gi-Oh from the original series would have been nice to see some new support to get the decks up to speed you know to maybe to be rogue level they, did, they don't need to be like competitive like you know really high scene but to get them like you know just to be on this similar level to the similar power level of decks that we have now really that would have been really really Another thing I would like to say is that, you know, there's no other formats. One of the biggest crimes and shame, I would say, is that this uh, is that this set is really good. But because we have no other official format, from Konami anyway, that it ends up being completely and utterly pointless. And we as players have to create, um, you know, a format which is not officially sanctioned uh, by Konami. I mean, the only other format we have is Master Duel. Um, I went to the 250 YTS and I didn't even see uh, a, a Duel Links uh, tournament there. So I think the only official tournament, we only official format we have is Master Duel um, from, you know, Konami. So we only have two formats. You either play Standard Yu-Gi-Oh! or you play Master Duel. That's basically it. Um, we don't have... Um, you know, go for that. I mean, we do. I mean, YCS. You know, they did. They did provide it, but it's not an official format that has been put into the game. And I feel this is such a shame. If we're going to be releasing, if you're going to be releasing, you know, the 25th anniversary box with all the old sets when the game first released, make it into a thing. Maybe we could. You could have done, you know, 25th anniversary format. Where we have, where you can only use cards from the 25th anniversary box. It would have been a nice um, addition, you know, to the game. Get like, you know, some of the old school players or get some new casual players in. Where they can play the game, you know, uh, and re-experience the ground, the ground.
around school Yu-Gi-Oh that some of us older players have experienced when we first played the game. That, I feel, is a wasted opportunity there. And it's such a shame that it hasn't uh, been done. Okay, and so we're talking about here Konami's changes. And I'd like to say, like, this year, and I think since 2020, I, thought I have spoken about it in other previous videos, but I have seen the gradual shift. We've seen a gradual shift from Konami into realizing that making break my board style, uh, uh, you know, archetypes or decks, you know, is not really good for the health of the game. We're seeing that we're, they're trying not to be making um, generic negates being so free anymore. And we see that with this new generic negate that we have here, which is um, Bestial Disparta coming out in Cyberstorm Access. Now, if we read that effect, um, you can target one banished light or dark monsters which are summoned to your field. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect you can target one banished card, shuffle it into the deck. Then if you are that card's owner, destroy that monster. If your opponent was if you if you negate that activated effect. You can only use each effect of beast or disparter once per turn. Now, I like this card and I like this way of um negation going forward. Where it comes with the price it comes with a form of cost it's not free you have to set things up compared to the uh Appaloosa that we had previously and these are the sort of negates we have now which are pretty very free um if we read Appaloosa you can only control an Appaloosa above the goddess the original attack of this card becomes 800 times the number of link materials used for its link summon once per chain when your opponent activates a monster effect quick effect you can make this card lose 800 attack and if you do negate the activation so essentially this if it's made uh, properly is goes to 3200 3, attack points meaning it has the four monster negate it's quite excessive in my opinion um it's quite a lot you know and it's really easy to bring out at most times and i'm glad konami has moved away from this and he's making more and he's making negate generic negates don't get me wrong but he's giving them some form of cost and he's making them at least not so free and i think there's a i think there has been a realization from konami and i, and I have been noticing this since 2020 where we, they are making generic stuff but they are putting some form of cost on them i think they have realized that making stuff a bit too free is uh, a bit of a problem I mean, they have, they have obviously been, been trying here. They have, we have like, sp uh, you know, Sprite Elf, where they have been trying to make, they have been trying to obviously make it a bit less generic, uh, bit gener a bit, you know, less generic right, with Sprite Elf. Obviously, the effect is quite strong. They would, they did try. But again, it was still too generic. The effect was still too powerful. Like, I get where they were coming from. Like, obviously, using level two, uh, you know, level two monsters. But the fact that you could, also use Link 2 monsters to make Sprite Elf. It's a whole other debate. But the point is, there is an attempt. There is a, there is, you know, um, as we can, as I can see, some attempt that is being made to try and add some balancing to powerful effects. And not just to have powerful effects for uh, be so free. And I'm definitely appreciating that going forward. Um, so, so let's move on to the next series of changes. Um, and we have here, we're talking about, again, um, you know, synchro monsters that don't need a tuna to synchro summon, that are quite free. Obviously, so they released, like, back in the Link era, they released uh, Ib, the World just, uh, Chalice just TCR, uh, Synchro 5. And this is a synchro monster, again, one of the first synchro monsters that we, we, we had, the second, really, that we had in the game that you could synchro summon without needing a tuna. The first one was our Nirvana High Paladin. That was one of the first synchro monsters in the game, Nirvana High Paladin, could synchro summon without a tuna. Um, but then they were experimenting a bit with Ib the World of TCR. So I think the experimentation was a bit like, if we have a synchro monster that you know you can synchro summon, it adds you quite a bit of value, um, it's not gonna be so bad. But again, I think we've learned. I think uh, very quickly we learned both in OCG and TCG. Very quickly, this card got bad. It was way too good, w did way too much for Synchro Five, and I think now obviously they're trying to reintroduce this again. 
but tone it down a bit and we see this with chaos angel so if we look at chaos angel's effect um yes like before you can sit you can tickle someone without a tuner um but you do need um you know a light or dark master to act as a tuner and if you used uh if you used a light uh you know uh, monster then secret monster you control are affected by uh, opponent's card effects monster effects and dark your opponent's monsters your monsters cannot be stronger in battle now i think there is an attempt here to try and mitigate the issues that they did with um ib the world chalice justicia i think what is being attempted here is to try to see like the the perfect way to go and obviously giving like battle protection and monster effect protection nothing crazy and just giving a baseline there of 3500 to uh, uh 3500 attack points and 2800 defense points now this is a great synchro 10 to test the waters is it is it going to be really good um we're gonna see in the future um, while yes, this card is really really strong and it has battle immunity depending on how it is made or most effect immunity um, You know, I, I think it is good. I think it is a step in the right direction and um, While you know on the surface it looks pretty busted pretty broken. I Think like it's not that bad in hindsight because it doesn't give a lot of um, value like Ib did I think I think like if we're going forward with making if Konami's going forward with making synchro monsters that don't need uh, tuners to synchro summon, I think Chaos Angel is the perfect middle ground that I think we can all agree on. Something that is gives a obvious boost that it needs to do, but it's not too crazy and just gives it's it's just right. I think having being a synchro ten and having like you know battle immunity i think is warranted or being able to choose the effect of being unaffected by opponents uh monster unaffected by opponents monster effects i think that those are good two effects and it's good to have a choice between those two it's good to be a nice wall a nice protection there so i'm liking this i'm liking these changes um whether chaos angel is going to pay dividend whether it's not going to hit the ban list is um, yet to be seen. We'll see whether it will hit the ban list near the end of the year. But I think it can dodge a ban list. I think it's all right. Uh, maybe it's my, maybe you might say it's a hot take here, but I think Chaos Angel is a healthy Synchro 10. And I think while it is a strong uh, monster, it is not a broken monster. And those are the kind of monsters I feel we need in Yu-Gi-Oh! We need strong monsters, not broken ones. Okay, and let's go into the last part where we have some other changes, which is doing with traps. Now, for the longest time, I think since um, Synchro era, we, we, we've seen a, a shift from traps and Konami, using, uh, Konami making spells that were that very, very powerful. We've been seeing our traps were sort of like uh, mirror force. They were very, um, very fixed very situational unless the monster monster extra deck mechanic got faster and faster and improved and spells improved traps were left to the wayside and it did feel like when we entered synchro era that the trap usage was starting to to dimmer there were some traps obviously we were using some popular ones but just trap usage overall across the board was really going down that was not until like few years after the uh, synchro era and heading into the link era we were introduced for, with infinite impermanence and i feel infinite impermanence is one of the best traps to come in in a long time and to reintroduce traps into our into you know the uh, into the uh, into the competitive scene but into Yu-Gi-Oh in general and to basically say that traps do matter and i like infinite impermanence for it i like the fact that it acts like a spell it is nice it is a quick and it truly symbolizes what a hand trap is. When we talk about the 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 be one of the best trap in Yu-Gi-Oh, hands down, it goes to infinite impermanence. Not only has this card since release ne been in every single format, which is absolutely impressive if you think about it. 
Like for a card since release to be in every single format, to never be a dead card at all, is absolutely impressive. No, not even, there are some spells that just go out of rotation. This card has never been limited. Never gone out of rotation competitively. On, it has been used in every single way, whether in the rogue strategies or in the competitive strategies. It's always been there. It's been a fantastic card and it's aged, has aged like fine wine. Absolutely beautiful. And um, for me, I love, I love the card and I love what it represents and I love what it brought back into Yu-Gi-Oh! It brought back um, us players' awareness that traps do matter. Um, traps and uh, traps, if they're going to be made into the future, need to be a bit more creative and need to have need to do extra things than other trap that that to make them justifiable to make them worth playing. Evenly matched is another example of how you how we do traps right. Another one is Red Reboot. Unfortunately, its band was being a bit too too strong, but overall, like. I'm like we I like the usage of traps. I like the way that traps have been reintroduced into the game again, giving them a fresh coat of paint and Yu-Gi-Oh has been feeling a bit more complete. Obviously, when traps lost their way, lost their usage, it just felt like we Yu-Gi-Oh as a game wasn't complete. That we're only playing with monsters and spells and traps were just window dressing. You just you never played them. I mean, before Infinite Impermanence was released, traps were barely in anyone's decks. So I'm liking that. Overall, these three changes, I'm liking that. And I'm liking that it, uh, in the 25 years of playing this game, does this game have a lot of problems? Absolutely. But I will say, since 2020, we've had a significant change in, uh, in the game. We've had Konami realizing and taking steps forward to addressing the big elephants and problems in the room. Especially this year with the, uh, you know, the banning of Sprite Elf. Now, to many, you, we, you, might, you might think that, you know, banning Sprite Elf, you know, was warranted, was the correct thing to do. And, um, and I would say, yes, it was. But the difference is, is that if this was Konami before 2020, Sprite Elf would still be in the game right now and would still be in, um, you know, for the next two years, ha haunting, haunting our dreams and haunting our nightmares. I like the fact that there's an attitude now when it comes to Konami that if we see a problem, we deal with it straight away rather than, rather than look at a problem and, w and just leave it alone. You know, there's, there seems to be an incentive of if there are things that are destroying the balance of the game, deal with them now and don't leave them till later. I like that. Konami, please continue on this path. This is the correct path of um, where we're heading. I like the fact that we, we, have, we are getting more board breakers in every, in, uh, in every year with sets. I like the fact that um, we are toning down on our generic negates, or if at least if we're making new generic negates, we're making them have a cost. And I'm also liking that we've stopped printing flood new floodgate cards into the game. And if we are printing floodgate cards, we are giving them some kind of cost. Like for example, we do have a new floodgate card, but however, it is locked to use Arctic. And only use Sarctic and play it. So we're not making Floodgate cards generic. Okay. This is one of the things that makes me very happy. When it comes to playing this game. I am see I have seen some very, very big improvements. And I think the community. And I think most YouTubers at large. Or whatever. Just really like to complain a lot about um, the game. But they don't really look at just the big improvements we've had you know the last the last three years we've had a massive improvement in this game um it's we've had some of the best formats from 2020 onwards we've had been having really really good formats some fantastic formats
I mean, the tier format leaves a lot to be desired. I ain't, I ain't gonna front. That, that format was not the best at all. But I kind of understand what Konami was going for with tier. That doesn't mean I agree with its creation, but I understand. And I think what uh, Konami was trying to do was, they had been seeing was that, uh, you know, break by board strategies rather than making decks that just make, you know, negation, negation, negation was not the solution. So how about making a deck that just does value instead, that just gives you a lot of advantage. And so the only way to do that, the logical conclusion was to, for an archetype to be doing advantage on your opponent's turn, as well as on your turn. And that completely went off the rails. But we are seeing the perfect balance, which is branded. I feel branded is the perfect balance and the perfect answer to the advantage issue, uh, to the advantage uh, problem. I think branded across the board, we, I think has, we have an acceptance of this as a player base, whether it's TCG or OCG. I think we, we like this archetype. It's a great archetype. It's not too strong. While it does have its um, disgusting things, as we've seen in uh, TCG with that expulsion uh, thing, but leaving expulsion uh, trap aside, it's a very healthy and great uh, deck. And I'd like to see more decks like this. I'd like to see more decks that are strong, really, really strong, but are balanced in a way and are not broken. I think... You know, I've, I'm optimistic, you know, when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and for, you know, for a long time, I think, celebrating 25 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! I think it's been, it's, it's been a ride. It's been a roller coaster. But I think I can honestly say we are truly heading in, uh, in the right direction. Are there a lot of things to change? I would say not much, really. I think... If we continue heading where we're heading, if we continue on this path, um, the game, not only are a lot of things being addressed, but we're noticing that our ban lists are noticing they're less hazardous and we're having more healthy conversations as communities. We're usually, there's usually an agreement since 2020 on what cards should be banned. There's no um, really, diff you know, like, definitive like you know arguments of you know uh, this this that and the other there's usually a, a wholesome agreement of we all we all as a community come to a consensus when we're having banished discussions on what cards need to be banned which is a complete improvement that tells me that that things are being done correctly if we as a community can all come to the same consensus when it comes to banned cards and are not really arguing a lot about them then i think that's a step in the right direction we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master my faith right is in your hands